victor your plans will prosper jesus your kingdom come king of every age and every age to come your war of death is won we declare your kingdom a glorious day awaits we will see your face to face but we won't wait to sing your eternal Above all other names, Jesus. 
Hey guys, welcome to this week's CityGate surprise. Today, we'll be surprising Elysia, someone you may have heard pray like an absolute warrior. She actually lives right next to CityGate, so let's go see how she's doing. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Alicia. I am from Jamaica. I'm researching my research is on tourism resilience. Okay. How do systems, how do yeah. tourism systems, because tourism is a system, and look at how systems become more resilient in the face of disasters. And so actually, wow. COVID has been a blessing and a curse. I mean, COVID is a disaster, and yeah. so we're looking at it in a very practical way. Yeah. How's lockdown life? Lockdown life has been interesting. Um, in the beginning, it was difficult. Yeah. Um, but in Jamaica, I'm used to hurricanes. Okay. So hurricanes, in my mind, I just said, okay, hurricane, get all that I need and just stay down until the storm passes. Yeah. And so for the first um, month of the lockdown, I was hunkered in my space. Okay. It yeah. taught me how to pivot up quickly, how when okay. things are not going, how it needs to go. Um, it also has really, you know, deepened my faith in God and just looking and reliance on Him. What TV series have you binged on? Uh, what TV series have I binged on? That would have been White Collar. Okay. I love I don't know it. Where's you don't it? know White Collar? Oh my <laughs> gosh! Well, thank you so much for letting us speak into your life a little bit. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I think we'll call it that. Going through student accommodation and seeing the majority of walls empty was an experience but it's great to see members of our church family doing well. Good morning, church. It's great to be with everyone tuned in online, wherever you are. If you're new here this morning, you're super welcome. We'd love to get to know you more and connect. We've got some real treats lined up for you today. First up, uh, a big shout out to Stuart and Hillary, who got married on Wednesday, just gone. Um, all in lovely sunshine too. God bless you guys. In a moment, uh, we'll be praising and worshiping together with worship songs recorded in our lovely building followed by a time of prayer that Alicia is going to be helping us in. P.S. Thank you for being so kind when uh, I showed up at your doorstep. Um, we're then going to be hearing a talk on restoring the church, and our one-to-one -one prayer rooms will open for anyone who'd like prayer or a chat. Father God, we thank you for a beautiful day. Help us fix our eyes on you this morning as we come before you. Let's worship.
Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls.
Hi Citigators, how are you? I hope this day finds you well. And I want to pray today along the lines of reassuring faith, a confident faith. Because our faith is not, is not in our circumstances. Our faith is not in the things that we see or the things that we go through. Our faith must be grounded. It must have an anchor. So the same way in which a ship, when it is coming to shore, it finds an anchor so that it can be held steady in the, in the midst of the, 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 the waves that will want to toss and throw it. It's the same way about life. Life always wants to, to, to discombobulate us. It wants to confuse us. But we have to have a solid and a grounded hope. And that hope is grounded in nothing else and no one else but God. I want to read to you quickly from Psalm 62. And it says, My soul waits in silence for God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold. I won't be greatly moved. I go down to verse 6. It says, My soul waits in silence for God alone because my hope comes from Him. He alone is my rock and salvation, my stronghold. I won't be moved. It's the very same way that the, the scriptures repeats itself. It talks about who that, that, that trust is in, in, in. And that trust is not in man. It's not in our finances. 
It's not in our, our plans. It's not in somebody else providing for us. But our faith must be grounded in God and in his promises because his word is true. And if the, 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 we have to determine who do we trust. Do we trust God in the good times only? Or do we trust him when hope seems far off? There's a song that Donny McClurkin sings called I'll Trust You, Lord. It says that faith, it goes something like this. It says, I know that faith is easy when everything is going well. But can you still believe in me when your life's a living hell? When all the things around you seem to quickly fade away, there's just one thing I really want to know. What if it hurts? What if you don't hear me? Will you trust me? And that's the question I'm asking you today. And I'm encouraging you to stop and ask the Holy Spirit to remind you of God's promises. Because that is something else besides his word. It's something else that we can hold and cling dearly to. And sometimes when we think are, are, are going crazy, and when we're worried and we're frustrated, we don't seem to reflect and stop because our minds are going at 100 miles per hour. But I encourage you today to stop. What has God promised you? Go back and remind God of his promises because he is a man of his word. And he talks, he says in the words that he, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we are going to see that. So that is one thing that we have to hold on to. And so I want to pray today just to encourage you along those lines. Heavenly Father, I thank you for who you are. I thank you that Father God, you are a faithful friend. I pray for that those who are whose hope is diminishing, mighty God. Holy Spirit, I ask that, Lord, you would encourage them. That, Lord, you would remind them of your goodness. And that, Father God, as you remind them, it will encourage and build their faith up. And it will begin to serve as an anchor along with your word, mighty God, to keep them in this time. We bless you and we give you thanks. Amen. See, Gators, have a grounded faith. Your faith must be grounded. And it must go down in the word of God. Have a great week. Amen to that. Lord, we thank you for a reminder of your goodness and the assurance of greater things that have yet to come. Thank you, Sean, and our awesome worship team for leading us so wonderfully. It's so good to be in his presence worshiping together. If you're new here today and haven't already done so, give us a holler on the live chat or send us an email to hello at citygate.church. We want to hear from you. For those who have missed meeting face-to-face -face at the Citygate Centre, we have an opportunity to attend on-site, in person, on Sunday the 20th of September. That's right, you heard me. Bookings will open as soon as today's meeting ends, and there'll be a limited number of spaces. So if you don't want to miss out, listen out for more details later. If you'd like to support what we've been doing as a church, giving's a big help. Some of us like to do this by standing order, but you can also use your mobile phone alongside the details. It'll appear on the screen now in the description box below, or with the QR code just here. Uh, this is for our mission as a church, like supporting those who are struggling in the current economic climate, or because of COVID, or for reaching out to the wider community. For more info on the many things that we do, um, feel free to check out our social media or email hello at citygate.church. In just a moment, we'll be hearing from Guy Miller as he speaks about restoring the church. He heads up commission, um, the family of churches our church belongs to, and he loves fishing. Fishing's great. Um, but just quickly before that, uh, Russ is going to tell us some news about reopening church. Over to Russ. Hey Citygate, I've got big news for you. As you may have heard, we are going to be meeting publicly again on Sunday, September the 20th. 10.30 at the Citygate Centre. Remember that place? Of course you do. Um, we're going to be working with government guidelines to make it safe but also meaningful. We recognise that some uh, will not be able to attend at this time and that's okay. We're going to continue to live stream as well. Um, attached to this video is a, the guidelines of what it will look and feel like on that Sunday, which will help you make a decision as to whether you will be there. Also attached, you'll find a survey which will help us plan for that meeting and other meetings from that point. We want as many people who want to come and gather with us to be able to do so. So that will really serve us well as we understand where you're at and what you're looking to in the future. It's exciting days. It'll be great to reform church again and be 
together. I hope that you can join us. We'll see you very soon. Bless you. Well, good morning, dear friends uh, in Citygate. So wish we could physically, Heather and I could physically be with you to greet so many old friends and say hi. And we love this church, given much of our life to it. We love its leaders. We're excited about your future and are praying for you. And as I was reflecting on what to bring this morning, I was reminded of the early chapters of Lord of the Rings when the hobbits want to leave the world as it were. They hear news of the black riders riding forth, bringing destruction, and they want their world to remain the same and are told in no uncertain terms that evil will find them. And theirs is a quest to destroy the work of the evil one. And so this message this morning is a reminder and an encouragement to every single one of us that there is, or we have authority Christ risen authority to bring a kingdom and to destroy the works of the evil one and that what lies ahead of us are huge challenges but ones in which we will prevail and we will overcome. So I want to address everybody. I wonder if you this morning are feeling fearful, if you're worried about your job, worried about what it's going to mean after the furlough scheme comes to an end, wondering about the economy, I wonder if you've lost confidence in the government, lost confidence in the NHS, lost confidence in scientists who predict this and then change their minds. I wonder if you've been caught up with all the Christian conspiracy theories that this is really Bill Gates injecting microchips with the number 666 into our bloodstreams and we are all being indoctrinated by the devil. I wonder if you are nervous, if you have questions, if you are fearful this morning, well this is a message for you because the bigger question that we should be asking, every believer should be asking is, what is God doing? What is God doing in the world today? And my suggestion to you this morning is God is ruling and reigning and bringing about something for his glory in the midst of all the suffering, all the work of the evil one. You see, what we're witnessing is what happens when mankind takes control of the world and rejects God. It plunges this world into war, it plunges this world into chaos, it plunges and opens the door to all manner of evil and suffering and death. Well, the good news is that history is moving, not in cycles, forever ending cycles, but it's moving towards a great finale. And in that great finale, Christ returns for a glorious church. And if we know anything from church history, we understand this very simple principle that after moments of great crisis in the world, often come great times of renewal and revival for the church. And that's how I want you to pray. That's how I want you to think this morning. Mark Sayers says, as cultural Christianity washes away, a blank canvas is appearing with the possibility of a new story written upon it. So I want to encourage you right at the outset of this message is to take a, as it were, a spiritual paintbrush and start to paint on that canvas, that blank canvas, what you have hoped for all your life, what you're believing for in God all your life, what you can see as the possibilities of the church in this next future generation. And so let's just take a pause. I want you to turn to Ephesians 4, a passage which in the early days of New Frontiers became a restoration passage that renewed us and encouraged us and excited us. And I want you to get your Bibles, I want you to open, read Ephesians 4, 7 to 16, and I'm going to look at some areas where I believe God wants to bring restoration. The first area of restoration I want you to see from this passage is restoring our first love. This is the primary thing, this is the most important thing in the four areas we'll look at. It says here in verse 10, he who descended 
that's Christ, is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Paul, when he begins his letter to Ephesians, it's, it's an incredible anthem of wonderful praise, worship, awe. You almost, you almost can't catch his breath. He so wants to pour out his adoration and worship to this awesome God. And within the, those first few verses, so many incredibly deep theologies spring from those verses in terms of God's adoption, God's predestination, there are God's greatness, God's gospel, God's love. It's, it's just whew, God's grace. It's, it's just awesome. And uh, I guess when we think about our choices, what happens next? What are we going to make choices? We need to firstly go back to God's choice. God chose us in him before the creation of the world. He chose us. In 1976, I fell in love with Heather Bailey, who became Heather Miller, but in 1976, I also gave my life to Jesus Christ. And two great love stories began. And the greater love story is that Christ found me, or I found Christ. But actually, the love story didn't begin then, says Paul. The love story began in eternity past. Before a daisy appeared on planet Earth, before the first dolphins and whales frogged in the waves, before the first sunset or sunrise, God set his love upon Guy Miller. He set his love upon you if you're a child of his this morning and he loves you. He wants your heart. He wants your devotion. He wants your adoration. And when I became a Christian, I went nuts. I, I, I used to have stickers on my exercise books. I used to give in for my A-levels with smile, Jesus loves you for the teacher. I used to want to tell my friends, stop classes to tell people that God loves them and that God created this world, not evolution and chance. It was embarrassing. I was embarrassing, but I was in love. I couldn't get enough of God. I wanted to read his Bible. I wanted to go to church three, four, five times a week because I wanted to know more about him and enjoy him. But that first love needs to be fought for and rekindled. We know in Revelation, God challenges his church, you've forsaken your first love. They were doing good things, the church, but they had put God in a box. And Martin Lloyd-Jones says every generation of Christians grows up with this challenge of wanting to put God in a box. And A.W. Tozer said the what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Think about that this morning. What do you think about when I say the word God? Is God just something a little bit better, a little bit cleverer, a little bit more holy than you? Or does he just take your breath away? Do you fall on your knees and exclaim that he is awesome? In Exodus 32, we read about the children of Israel complaining about Moses being away and said to Aaron, make us a God in the, in the shape of Egypt. And so Aaron took their gold and cast it into a golden calf and said to them, well, how do you want God? I believe cultural Christianity we've grown up with has so weakened our understanding and our imagination of almighty God and God wants to restore our worship he wants to restore our first love he wants us to restore our worship that we fall on our knees often and say how awesome and wonderful he is the second area of restoration is to restore the gospel it says in verse 9 he, he ascended means that he is also the one who descended to the lower earthly regions. Christ, this is talking about, became man. Christ descended to, to earth. He descended into a grave. He descended into the lower realms in order to bring about 
release from captivity. The glorious gospel that Paul preaches says, I want to remind you what is of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. Paul wanted to underline this restoration principle that the gospel we need to be thrilled with the gospel we need to remind ourselves of the gospel we need to remind ourselves that the one who fills the whole universe the one who is so awesome so unknowable so omnipotent and all-powerful is the one who contracted himself to a span became flesh and blood in order to taste our humanity and be the second adam to to make a choice to not disobey but to obey God and through his wonderful obedience to a cross to his death and to his resurrection we who were lost we who were dead in our trespasses and sins can know forgiveness can know life that God himself brings through this powerful Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead if you've never believed on Jesus this is a moment on this Sunday to just pause the video and maybe pray Jesus would you reveal yourself to me but for every single one of us who is a Christian I want to challenge us is the gospel exciting to you are these verses life to you or are you caught up in a lifestyle which is a worldly lifestyle where actually you you, you don't often remind yourself that you're a sinner you don't daily repent of your willfulness your sinfulness your greed your pride your arrogance and, and come before a cross and confess if we confess our sins he's faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness the cross and the gospel need to thrill us it needs to be good news to us if it's ever going to be good news to the world out there and when I think about the world out there let me just remind you one statistic 70% of the UK say they have no intention of ever going to a place of worship therefore Citygate there's no point having a beautiful building. There's no point having a fantastic worship band and fantastic preachers and a great welcome and a great cup of coffee. If 70% of Bournemouth are not going to come into the doors, we need to take the gospel to them. In small groups, in little communities, in, in sites, in new opportunities in Southwell, we need to go to where people are. And we've had this wonderful opportunity in lockdown and Heather's going to, just going to tell you in a couple of minute test for what we've seen God do in Wentworth Avenue during lockdown. It's our conviction increasingly that not just inviting people to church, we must increasingly be being the church to people and going to the people. And uh, we've been in Bournemouth for virtually the whole of the five min months since uh, the coronavirus crisis started. And it was a great delight in the early days to have our first on the street service. Uh, it was organised by an, a re retired Anglican uh, minister across the road and we attracted probably 30 people all socially distanced, sang Amazing Grace and heard um, some prayers. Uh, on the Pentecost Sunday, Guy and I were actually asked to do the service and we had uh, probably more people, 40 plus people for that. And then finally on the 72 year anniversary of um, the National Health Service, we had yet another service on the streets and uh, 50 probably people were there for that and the comments afterwards were quite insightful people really feeling a touch from God and wondering what it was that was going on um, so it was a very exciting thing for us to do that and to be involved in our community again and an encouragement for us all to think of different ways to get out of the church walls. So restoration area number three is we need to see a restoration of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.11 said it was Christ, the risen Christ, who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. What for? To prepare God's people, that's the local church, for the work of service so that the body of Christ, the church, may be built up. The risen Jesus Christ gave gifts to his church. Not for a title, not for prominence, not that one gift is more important than the other. He gave these gifts in order to see the church become mature. Every local church serving its local town, its local community, 
deeply involved being Jesus Christ to that world. And in order for that to happen, Jesus has to bring in master builders, apostles and evangelists and prophets and teachers and pastors. They're there not to put on a platform, but they're there to help us to become Christ-like, help to build us together to a mission, help us to be a body, the body of Jesus to our town like Bournemouth. And I believe I've witnessed in the last 10, 20 years monster churches being built. The church of the one eye, a church which is just renowned for its prophetic gifting or for its end time theology. Or how about the church of the big mouth? People come in their hundreds, if they're not their thousands, to listen to people who can speak so eloquently and so wisely and so amazingly that we're all drawn and awed and wow, isn't it this good? But not realising we're sitting on our hands and just like going to a theatre week after week and eventually we do get bored. 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, talks about how Christ has given every single member of his body gifts, not for themselves, but to be able to help others. I can remember when we first got involved with New Frontiers, there were two amazing things that stand out. One was that there were apostles today and prophets today. I had a huge problem with that. I didn't quite square with my theology. I thought there were 12 plus Paul and that was it. But then suddenly having my eyes open that rather than titles and names and famous people, this was a gift to equip the church to do its mission. And we need to receive those gifts in, in order for the church to be healthy. But the other revelation was that actually on a Sunday, anything could happen. You sat there and wondering, who was God going to speak through this week? Again, sadly today, what I've witnessed is that one, two, three, usually prophets, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there are other gifts we need to see released. Every Sunday, if we're going to restore the church, should be a huge adventure. Who's God going to be touching? Where's the Holy Spirit going to be moving? The final area of restoration, restoration four, is the kingdom of God. In verse 13, it says, So that we, until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, and we become mature, attaining to the measure, the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. We, the church, we believers in the church are meant to grow up. And in growing up, we become agents of a kingdom. So beyond the four walls of the church, beyond the training and the equipping and the mentoring in the church, we go out as disciples and we bring kingdom transformation. What is the kingdom? It is the king's power on the king's people in the king's place wherever we put our foot wherever we work wherever we go to school wherever we uh, visit college where we live are meant to be areas where the kingdom of God is expanding and extending as we bring peace as we bring love as we bring joy as we bring change where there's godlessness and so let me finish this message it's an encouragement as you go into your Uh, autumn series on restoration to believe God is restoring his church in these times and to be an agent open wide open to the kingdom of God that you are someone who welcomes it we've been in Westminster Chapel for four years and it's interesting we've got another building project underway there and one of the challenges is taking out the pews and how so many people down through so many years have had a problem with that old way of thinking and yet I know that's the tip of the iceberg for many Christians with the church we don't really want to be more involved with the gospel we don't really want to get involved and bring gifts of the Holy Spirit we want to sit and just listen as passive spectators Sunday by Sunday and that will not cut it in this new world that God is bringing upon us. God wants to restore you this morning to red hot passion for Jesus. He wants to restore a love for the gospel. He wants you to restore the gifts of the Holy Spirit to his church. And he wants to restore the kingdom of God mentality where we take the kingdom wherever we go. So may God bless you and may God restore Citygate in these days in which we're living to this life that I'm encouraging us. God bless you. Dark.
darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt time of worship and what a message the king's power and the king's people in the king's place kingdom of god mentality i love that come on thank you guy for encouraging us in advancing his kingdom so proactively by his spirit to see lives transformed if you'd like prayer off the back of what we've just heard or for any other reason our one-to-one -one prayer rooms are now open and available through the QR code Zoom link, which is available in the description box below also. And now, without further ado, I've got the privilege of breaking the news that the booking system to be with us on site on Sunday the 20th of September is now live. Yes! 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 You can now book into this and it is bookings only, so secure your place as we have limited numbers. Go!
and see you guys next week.